In the latest example of the North American comic book industry essentially dying as we know it, it looks like the comic book media is dying. The rats that can abandon ship and find work elsewhere are doing that, and the ones that can't are basically resorting to e-bagging, which we've already seen creators do. Here to talk to me about that is Aaron Sparrow. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing great. Uh, get your last look at it, guys, because the Christmas tree is about to come down. All the other Christmas stuff has been pulled down. This is the last thing, so last time you're going to see it, man. And we've got a special message could come from Chris Arott later on the video. But first up, Michael Doran, comics journalism veteran and co-founder of Newsarama, has parted ways with Games Radar Plus and Newsarama after more than a quarter of a century. Currently, it appears that staff writer George Marston is the sole remaining employee working under the Newsarama banner which raises questions about the long-term viability of Newsarama as a brand on its own. I'm going to say that Newsarama does not have a long-term viability whatsoever, considering it has one employee and the only person that cared about it has left the company. No, it seems a lot like comiXology, where it's like almost everybody's gone and there's a few people there to sweep up. But the comic books are doing better than ever, Aaron. That's what we're told. This is the best comic industry we've ever had, as people are being you know put out of business and having to leave the industry altogether. Could be better than this. Yeah, no, it's great. I saw a guy the other day just uh, on the street, you know, with a little cardboard sign and, uh, you know, just, uh, just completely homeless. And it said, at least Dogman is selling well on his little sign. So, you know, <laughs> industry's doing great. It's the best industry we've ever had. Speaking of that, Chris Arendt worked for News Around for a long time. He ended up leaving. I think he started the Poppers. Maybe he's one of the people behind that. But he wants you to stop buying cobble books and start supporting cobble book journalism. <laughs> He says, now would be a good time to note if there's comic journalism you like, you should support it financially. If they offer memberships or take donations, do so. If they take ads, buy ads. If you wait for perfect, you'll be waiting a long time. You like creator-owned comics? There's creator-owned comics journalism with the comics beat. Panel X, panel, comic book, Herald. <laughs> Each of these has a way you can give money to directly. <laughs> uh, if I can channel my inner Nick Ricada here, how embarrassing <laughs> that is absolutely embarrassing uh i can't even he needs an infomercial it. where yeah, he's like, it's like for it's only two dollars a month <laughs> this comic book journalist can eat a loaf of bread <laughs> if you would just give up one comic a month and i got news for you people have given up a lot more than one comic a month uh but if you could just give up one comic a month you know for the price of uh you know one issue of batman you could help support a journalist who will insult you and call you an istophobe for the price of the joker or whatever you could definitely get a can of spam or something that's good eats for three days <laughs> why would you give these people money it. why would you give these people money these people hate you well they're comparing themselves to like uh crowdfunded comic book creators now like, there's a spot that they can do this. You know, you can go to Substack and create your own journalist newsletter or whatever. You can start a Patreon and all that stuff, but no one's ever going to give these guys any money because everybody that reads comics books hates these guys. They know that the part, they know they're part of the problem. You know, the biggest <laughs> thing that, my biggest takeaway from this is uh, the, the fact that he actually put out a tweet that said, you know, you can support the people who help give you a better understanding of comics. <laughs> yeah, because you as a reader don't understand comics. You need some guy to come along and break it down for you, to, to break down the news of the day. Well, I got news for you. There's plenty of people that do that. They're here on YouTube. There's one right there. I'm looking at him. There's a guy who And he's pretty damn handsome. News. Yeah, Not pretty damn handsome. At. And he will give you his honest opinion. He doesn't filter it through, well, is this going to get me uninvited from con parties where I get to hopnob with Mark Wade? You know, like <laughs> the social event of the season, uh, you know, the, the hellfire gala of San Diego, if you will. Um, <laughs> you know, you're going to get honest opinions from YouTube. These people can't move to YouTube. They've alienated the audience and they don't have the personalities to carry it, in, in, you know, largely. So, you know, is, is Heidi McDonald going to start a channel and get a bunch of views? I think on, she on did. Thoughts on the comic? Did she? I think so. She was streaming a few weeks ago. I think she had like three viewers. Oh, well, I see like from the beat uh, on Twitter, like I see that they stream and, and it's always like one or two viewers. You know, that's, <laughs> that's the most they can the most they can muster. It's just people don't trust you. You've you've damaged your own credibility. You guys wanted to be in club comics. 
And so you shilled for so long, you gaslit the fans. The fans said these problems are happening. You had creators that are saying these problems are happening. We're headed for an iceberg. And you guys wanted to play the no, everything is fine so that you could keep your access and you could keep palling around and be in your little Facebook groups where you plotted and schemed and blacklisted. And now all the chickens are coming home to roost. And like I said on Twitter, now you're looking up and you're crying, save us. And we'll whisper no. He also said when the next really good or bad situation happens in comics, what resources do you want to be able to research, or corroborate, explain, diffuse, and or highlight what's really happening? No one would ever go to Newsarama for that. No one would go to the Comic Speed. No one would go to CBR.com. No one would go to any of these places. What because they know you're going to be lied to. There's no credibility associated with any of those brands anymore. No, not at all. Uh, and I thought that the, the first response I saw to it was from Neon at Clownfish TV. You know, what resources do you want, you know, do you want to go to? And Neon said YouTube. That's all he said, just, just YouTube. And it was like, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Because everybody who moved on to YouTube who will actually give you their honest take, you know, their perspective may be wrong, but at least you're getting honest takes from these people, and, you know? And, and all, these, uh, all these comics journalists, they're all, they're all just complicit. They're complicit in the downfall of the industry. We've been telling you there need to be solutions and you decided to be part of the problem instead of being part of the solution. Well, now you're going down with the shit. And nobody cares. Nobody's going to throw you a life preserver. Well, I think it's funny, but that's about it. He also said, we have all lost comics, uh, entities, journalism outlets. They could have made it longer had we supported more. Your favorite outlets and reporters could be gone tomorrow if it becomes financially, physically, or emotionally unfeasible for them. And it's like he's completely oblivious to the fact that he and Heidi McDonald and people of their ilk are the ones that caused all this. They're the ones that went to uh was axel alonso and we're pressuring him saying hey you can't have a white writer write the child of blade and we didn't get the comic book for eight years and now we have it with danny lore and shockingly it's absolutely putrid everything these guys thought would save the industry has been the downfall of it and they're the ones that were pressuring the publishers to do that yeah you championed activism over talent you championed it over good stories uh and now we've got a bunch of basically propaganda uh, stuffed into comic books, uh, you know, heavy handed propaganda and people are rejecting it. People don't want to pay for it. You championed it. You're still championing it. And this is, you've reaped what you've sown. This is the whirlwind and it's going to wipe out, you know, we're going to see so many outlets, so many, you know, games, journalism, comics, journalism, all of these things are collapsing. They're all collapsing around. Ad revenues are down. Neon and Clownfish TV has been warning about this for years. He said it's, you know, it's coming. And people mocked him. People laughed at him. People like us have been talking about it, you know, and what happens? These people gaslight us. They, uh, you know, they blacklist us. They, they talk crap in their little Facebook groups where they conspire. We were right. We didn't want to be right. You know, you could have listened. We're not happy that we're right. We're not happy the industry is collapsing. Although to an extent, I'm thinking now, like my, my, thinking has kind of changed. I used to be like, oh man, we really got to save the comic book industry. And now I'm thinking the comic book industry as it is needs I'm to collapse, you. <laughs> you know, needs to collapse and maybe something new will grow. Yeah, that's the, th the thing. This is all happening, you know, kind of simultaneously. We're losing publishers. Now we're losing media outlets. Comic creators aren't getting paid. You know, this is the comic book industry that they wanted, Aaron. They wanted an industry where no one cared about the stories that was only about presenting whatever the social media flavor of the day was, this is what you get. You get nobody there. And it affects me too. And I know it affects you because you and I are both in the comic book industry. I don't want DC and Marvel to fail. In fact, for the long-term viability of my channel, I kind of need DC and Marvel to bounce back and be popular again and people to have interest in it so I can talk about how great the comic books are and tell people where they need to go and the stories that they absolutely can't miss. But I can't even talk about that stuff because there's almost nothing that you can't miss. In fact, a majority of the stuff you should miss. That's a problem. It's, it's a huge problem. I, you know, I love this medium. I love this, uh, you know, I love comics. I love that story, you know, just, the, I think it's the best storytelling vehicle in the world. And I, I agree with you. I would love to see Marvel and DC be good again. I would love to see creators and image producing, you know, really great stuff, you know, uh, that they're passionate about, uh, you know, talented people delivering good stories that are engaging and that we're interested in. That is what I want. And, you know, in, in my uh, in my career as an editor, the teams that I hired, I never went out and I said, what boxes do I need to check? 
you know, on my team. I just hired the best people possible. Do you identify as a duck? Because if you don't, you can't write Darkwing. That's I can't write Darkwing. Well, apparently that's why I got, uh, you know, I didn't get the Dynamite series. It's because I, <laughs> uh, I am not the right demographic. I am not a duck. Uh, you know, but, but, you know, I ended up with natural diversity on my teams. And it was because I hired the most talented people possible. And it just naturally happens. When you try and force it, you get a bunch of writers that are car basically carpetbaggers that are brought in. They don't understand comics. They don't respect it. They don't care about the lore. They don't care about the characters. They don't care about any of that. And they just write them however they want. You know, it's like this Blade's daughter. Danny Lord basically says in an interview that she's, you know, she's writing herself. You know, this whole scene was, you know, conversation I had with my mother. You know, you're bringing in this generation of writers that are narcissists. And they think that they, you know, because of the, by the virtue of their sexual preference or, you know, their race, or, you know, they think that that makes them interesting. And that, that you know, if I just tell my story with these characters, people will be interested. You're not interesting. It's not about you. It's about the characters. It's about digging into them and the foundations that are there when you have these properties that, you know, have been, you know, you're standing on the shoulders of giants, to use the Ian Malcolm term. And, uh, you know, before you even ask if you should, you know, you're, you're changing things and you're, you know, you're putting it out there and you're making it all about you. And it's like, we're not interested in you. We're interested in Blade. We're interested in the X-Men. We're interested in these characters. Tell good stories. My favorite part of the, the Twitter thread is when Chris Aaron kind of tries to call in people's integrity. If you get your comic news exclusively through social media, ask yourself if you trust the source inside that social media. Think about any biases that might be present, especially with direct sources. What the fuck are you talking about? You are both one of the most biased sources out there. There's a reason Newsarama and all these other outlets have basically died. Because no one trusts any of you, you idiots. And you've been exposed. You've been exposed as being in these Facebook groups and conspiring together. You know, let's, let's not forget this media that we should be trusting, according to Chris Arendt, uh, you know, the, uh, oh, or, you know the trusted sources. Remember that these trusted sources conspired to not cover Dynamite for a year. They punished Dynamite because Nick Barucci dared to try to make some money with Comicscape. And so they just didn't cover Dynamite for a year. They ignored them. They wouldn't run their press releases. They tried to conspire and punish Dynamite for daring to do that. Did they really that punish them? Because Gargoyle sold over 80,000 copies of the first issue. Well, no, it's come back around now. Now they're promoting them. You know, remember, Leading Cool, <laughs> Leading Leading cool was the only one that would still cover Dynamite, uh, Dynamite during that period. But they would, you know, always have that little, you know, Richard always put that little thing in the beginning with the link to the, uh, you know, to the... Uh, article about uh, them conspire you know like oh you know comics gate he would always put that in there in that first paragraph you know so that was the first thing that you would uh, you would see you know when he was covering them but everybody else conspired just not to cover them at all to punish them you know and is this so you want to talk about biases how about that that's ridiculous oh, yeah. these guys are doing all kinds of weird stuff behind the scenes and you reap what you sow this is the industry that you wanted to create. Well, this is the industry that you get to live in, where you sit on Twitter and you e-bag for everybody out there and hope that someone gives you enough money for a sandwich to get you through another day. Yeah, and they're they're extremely salty because YouTube is eating their lunch. You know, this is just like this is just like G four. You know, it's like you're trying to uh, you're trying to say, hey, well, what about us? And it's like, sorry, there's people out there that are doing it better. There's people out there that are being honest. There's people that aren't part of the industry that aren't going to these conventions and you know trying to cozy up and uh, get invited to these parties and feel like they're part of the in crowd it's just people on youtube that care about comics that care about the future of the industry that care about good entertainment that are out there saying to themselves hey i want to present the news i want to present it you know with with my honest take i want to give you honesty and sincerity and that's what youtube is doing and that's not what you get from these comics journalism sites and that's why they're dying I was doing a, a meeting and I had like, you know, eight people are sitting there and I'm giving them, this is what we're doing for the day. These are your projects and you YouTube to this. And this fucking Navy guy comes up on my leg and straddles it and just starts like slowly grinding on my leg while I'm doing the meeting. <laughs> I never looked him in the eye and I never told him to stop. Uh -huh. Finish if you must, sir. <laughs> You're like, I like pulled my headset out. That made me laugh so hard. <laughs> If you would like an example of why you just can't trust these guys, CBR actually had an article where they talked about comic books aren't, aren't selling well. We need to make more money while also denying that comic books aren't selling well in the same article. Doc and I talked about this. It's very frustrating. That's why these guys are dying left and right along with a lot of these publishers. And unfortunately, there's a lot of collateral damage in comic book shops. You don't see the video here. There's also a link in the video description.